This Blackhawk standard bearer is going to be my entry to an Instagram painting competition. I'm going to clean this up. I'm also going to make a base for it, which will be the first base that I've created that isn't just a standard one. And I'm going to cut off the slot a bit and get him to actually stand on the base. I haven't decided what I'm going to do for the base yet, but that's my next step after cleaning up the model. make the base I've started by cutting out this 32mm diameter circle out of black acrylic. I haven't got any cork or foam but I've got loads of cardboard so I'm going to use that and see what I can come up with. The cardboard that I've got is from these A4 envelopes. I ordered what I thought was going to be 10 and ended up receiving a box of 100. So what I've done is cut out loads of these bits. They are roughly 40mm by 20mm and then I'm just going to stack them all up, glue them all together, put them halfway on the base. That's going to make a kind of cliff on this side. So that for the competition it has to be no bigger than a 40mm base. So I'm starting with a 32mm base. These are only 40mm wide and then with it overhanging by half that would be 36mm. So 40 by 36. I glued 28 layers of these cardboard pieces together using PVA. Then once that had dried completely, I used a knife to carve into the block and make it look more like a rocky edge. I continued to cut into it until I reached the point that I was happy with. I then glued this finished rock to the base using super glue. As I'd cut away quite a bit of the card, I didn't have to overlap it on the base by as much as I was expecting to in order to stay within the 40mm limit. This gave me more space at the bottom of the base to play with. As I've recently been working through a box of vampire count skeletons, I had enough spares to make half skeletons, which I thought might look cool if I put on the base to make it look as though they were rising from the ground. Next I painted the rock and base with a couple of layers of payoff back, and whilst I was waiting for that to dry I assembled the skeleton I was going to use. Next was a coat of Mourn Fang Brown followed by a dry crushing of Xandri dust, after which I painted the areas that would be caught by the sun with another layer of Xandri dust, so that the shadows would be darker by comparison. Now that this was done, I started thinking about how I was going to mount the skeleton onto this base in a way that would make it look as though it was pulling itself out of where it had been buried. I decided I would create a plant growing from the rock face, which a skeleton could be holding onto in order to pull itself from this grave. I did this using wooden skewers which I cut down and carved using a knife. The skeletons all came with left arms that would have a shield mounted to them, so there's a piece in their hands that was perfect to connect the end of the skewer onto. I did this using super glue. I then cut up more pieces of skewer and used them to make other branches, which I stuck together using PVA wood glue. At this point I also primed the skeleton with a couple of coats of Corex white. Once I had fully painted the skeleton, I set about mounting it to the base. I settled on this for positioning and had to cut the bottom of the spear off at an angle. This was so that it would rest on the base nicely. I glued the plant bit to the rock using PVA and the skeleton and the spear to the base using super glue. I then glued sand and different sizes of small gravel to the base and flat parts of the rock to finish it off. Now that the base was complete except for the uppermost flat part, I began on the orc. I started by priming it with a couple of coats of chaos black and then dry brush white over it in order to pick out the detail which would make it easier for me when it came to painting the rest of it. Once this was done I was able to stick the orc to the base using super glue. In order to get the base finished on this model what I'm doing is actually going a bit out of order in the painting of the orc and I've started with the boots just in this purple. It is a humbrol enamel purple, uh, says 89 on the top. Not sure if that is the number relating to the paint or not. I've had that for probably about 20 years now. Um, luckily it's still fine, so that's just one coat of it. I'm probably just going to leave it as one coat so that it's still got some of the black slightly showing through. Then all I'm going to do is go in, do the highlights, leave it fairly dark as it's meant to be a black orc anyway. I just fancy doing it in purple. Um, and then once the boots are done, I'm just going to finish applying the rest of the sand and stones to the base, get that completely finished off, 
and then I'll go in and paint the skin of the orca and carry on as I would normally. I've finished the purple on the boots now and I'm quite happy with how they've turned out. They're a little bit glossy looking but hopefully when it dries out I'll dull down a bit. The enamel actually stayed wet for a long time so I was able to just wet blend the highlights so it's come out with a quite a nice effect that I'm really happy with. I then went about painting the orc as I normally would, starting with the skin. I used two different greens for this. Unfortunately, I'm not sure of the brands or actual colours, as they were just in these small pots that I found. But the darker green is like a mint green, and the lighter green is somewhere closer to a lime green. I did struggle with blending these well to make a nice gradient between the shadows and highlights, but that was down to my lack of skill rather than the paints. I continued blending until I reached a point that I was happy with. Once I tackled the skin, the next bit that I wanted to tackle was the chainmail. So there's just a small amount on the front, so I've just gone over that with two layers of lead belcher. What I'm going to do is finish off the rest of the armour with the purple, and then I'll go over all of the armour and the chainmail at once with a brown wash just to dirty it up and also make the contrast in the shades just that little bit deeper. I've finished painting the purple on the orc now and you can see that where it's enamel is very very highly glossy finish so I'm just gonna go over it with the brown wash hopefully dull down some of that shine darken up the low light areas and then leave the purple in its current state as the highlight it's meant to be a black orc so I want it nice and dark but obviously I've gone for a purple just to mix things up a bit. If it doesn't look good after the wash then what I'll do is actually go in and paint black on all the shadow parts and then just leave the purple as like a edge highlight kind of thing and see how that looks. The wash has done a pretty good job of getting rid of most of the sheen in the parts I didn't want. It's also as it was a brown wash has dirtied up the armour nicely. I may come back in, as I said, in some of the shadow parts with a bit of a black wash and just add to that effect, increase the contrast a bit between the armour. But overall I'm pretty happy with how it's looking at the moment, so now I'm going to carry on, finish off the like tusks and bits on the helmets, and then finish off the orc completely before moving on to the rest of the standard which is basically just a dead dwarf hanging on a pole. Before painting the rest of the metal parts on the orc I decided it was a good idea to paint the wood of the standard and the axe handle. After painting the wood for the standard and the axe I painted the leather parts with bestial brown. The wooden parts were done with graveyard earth. I've also now gone over the extra metal bits like the clasps and everything, any studs on the armour and just added a little bit more detail. I wasn't too neat with this because I'm going to go around that so I didn't mind about getting any extra bits onto the purple because I'm just going to turn them into kind of a rust effect. I've gone in and base coated the bone parts on the armour with Corex white. I'm now going to do a layer of sandry dust and then I'll paint that the same way that I did the skeleton and if you check out my skeleton videos you can see how that's done. I've finished painting the bone parts now and I've also gone in and started adding some of the rust effect around where the rivets are on the suit of armour. Then I went about painting the last of the metal parts on the orc. Now that I've got the last few metallic parts on the orc base coated in lead belcher I've only got the aging effects left to do on that so I'm gonna get that done and then move on to the dwarf and parts on the standard so that I can keep having a look at the orc and come back to it making any adjustments as and when I need to. I have now painted all of the base colours for the upper section of this model. I started out with the leather parts using bestial brown and then I started on the blue of the dwarf's clothes for which the darker blue is thousand suns blue and the lighter blue is araman blue after which i then went on to the um, skulls which i've just base coated in corex white 
The rope is done with uh, Zandri dust. I've got that somewhere. Um, we all know what that looks like. The metal, of course, is lead belcher, just for the steel looking parts. The Skaven head is painted with snake bite leather. The flesh on the dwarf is bronze flesh. I just used a mixture of these two. That one is almost dried out, didn't have much medium, and this one is really watery, so mixing the two actually gave me really nice paint. The hair, I'm not sure what orange it is, I've just got it in this little pot, so I can tell you which orange it actually is. Sorry, just getting all the messages. Uh, the green for the orc parts, again, I can't tell you what it is. I've got this little pot, it's got a code on it, but I couldn't tell you what that means. Uh, the buckle and the end of the belt for the Dwarves Retributor Armour. Dwarves are well known for their crafting abilities, so I thought I'd make that a bit nicer than the coppery looking colour that I've used for the chains of the and decoration elsewhere on the orc. And the wood, the same as when I was painting the rest of it. I've just used Graveyard Earth. So now I can go in, add shadows, highlights, finish off as much detail as I want. I've basically got it all sketched out. The colour plan's all there, so I'm very near the end of actually completing this model. Now that I've finished the skulls, the teeth of the orc head that's up there, and the rope, um, the rope I just went over with the Reichland Flesh Shade and then just dry brushed over that again with the Xandri Dust so basically just one less step than on the skulls um, I'm now going to go in and use this old flesh wash that I've got just to see what that looks going to use that on the dwarf, the main one and this little head just here see how that turns out and then I'll just go over the bright orange hair with a bit of Reichland Flesh Shade just to add a bit more detail and also tone that down a bit. I'm not sure how well you can see it with this lighting but I'm now calling this figure done. I've finished painting these two bits on the ends here. I was leaving them unpainted just so I had something to hold on to. I've also just done a very simple paint job on the shield on the back here. Now all I've got left to do is find out how to take a really good photo of it.